This is Judson Sapp, and you're listening to Never Off Duty. Today we've got Sheriff Michelle Cook, Clay County, and the Deputy Ford. The <laughs> Deputy Ford. I was Ford. joking. Ford. I was joking when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> we should have an echo so that we say the, the Deputy, Deputy, Deputy Ford. Ford. Oh, yeah, that would be better. I was going with the, why would we echo the the? <laughs> Oh, gosh, yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, we're back, and um, I'm telling uh, you, uh, Josh, if you're hearing me gesticulate in the background, I'm, I'm asking Sheriff Cook to move a little closer to her move mic. Move closer to the microphone. That's what he's trying. That's what I was like, what is he hand signaling me for? That's just I know. Weird. I know. I'm like, I'm pointing towards my mouth, and I'm, I'm like, this I'm is. hungry. I know, what does like, this mean? <laughs> so. Sorry. Uh, no. Is this better? It's, it's much better. Thank Thank you. You. Okay. The closer you are, the better it, it sounds. It's actually one of those weird things. That, that, that sounds like a pickup line. The, the, yeah. Yeah. the closer you are, the better. All right. Never mind. We're professionals I'll here. Try. We used that. My wife, I can say, the closer you are, babe, the better. Yeah. You know, let me know how so. that works out. I'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell my husband that, and he'll just look at me and go, you flashed your mind. <laughs> Thank you, honey. All that's, right. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's great. That's great. See, again, uh, if you listen to the last episode, uh, you, I have a tremendous respect for, for Sheriff Cook and now Deputy Ford, who I've gotten to know better, who I hope will be on a lot. Uh, and I don't think people appreciate your sense of humor, which I think that there's a perception of law enforcement is strict and stern and all that, but they forget law enforcement are also humans. They have senses of humors. They sometimes have spouses. They sometimes don't. They There's a lot of going, you're still humans. Yeah. There's a lot going on. And you, you know, you bring up a really good point because, you know, uh, in fact, Drew and I were talking, about, I can call him Drew because okay. we weren't. Yes. Yeah. Yes, um, absolutely. We were talking in the car about, um, you know, when to be, when to be hard, when to be, when to be that hard law enforcement deputy, and, uh, you know, there's a time and a place for it, but, um, and that's often what people see or perceive, but there's also the human side to law enforcement and, and our deputies, uh, you know, their, their coaches, their, their parents, their church leaders, they we've got one that's buddy, the elf, yes. um, <laughs> Good we'll have old to Ronnie. Bring him in one day. It is hilarious. Uh, you know, we have, we have deputies that, that, that dress up as characters and go into kids' schools and. And so there's really uh, so much more uh, to to being a deputy than just the hard line. And, you know, there's a time and place for the hard line, but it's not all the time. So, uh, you know, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, well, and, and one thing I know about your department, and it's I know your department better because I live here, is every deputy I've met is extremely friendly. Uh, there's just a real... We keep the mean ones away from you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's one or two. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, but I really do feel like that. I feel right. like uh, in the community and the ones I see, it, they just do a really great job. And I think that that your department could be something that other departments that maybe have an image should maybe study. Well, it's, and it's steal. developing a culture. I mean, you know, it, it is from the top down. It's developing a culture that's based on, uh, you know, relationships that's based on respect. And we're not always going to agree, but you have to uh, you have to maintain the culture of respect and kindness until it's time not to be kind. Yeah. And I will say this too. I do know uh, very well. I'm friends with a few other sheriffs in Florida and they are great too. I, yes. the, the ones that I'm friends with are all tend to have that personality. The great, great to get along with. Uh, they're all great. Maybe the ones I don't know are the bad departments. They're the mean know. ones. So I'm going right. to I'm gonna have to go branch out and, <laughs> more sheriffs and, and then I'll give you a little uh, intel. I'll be like, stay out of this county. Right, right. They're, right. they're, they're, they're the mean horrible. ones are coming. The mean <laughs> ones are coming. Now we're fortunate. So in in Florida, we have sixty seven counties, sixty six elected sheriffs. We've got one county that does some appointed public safety thing, but that was ruled unconstitutional. So there's going to be an election. Uh, so we'll have sixty seven elected sheriffs in the count uh, in the state. Wow. So mm-hmm. we talked about this last episode. And I think it's important for people to understand the difference between. In Florida, because mm-hmm. I think in Texas they have marshals, but uh, here we have sheriffs and they're unelected except for the one you mentioned. And then you have police chiefs. We also have some like our county that has school board too. And so let, let describe that to the listener because I don't think people sure. fully appreciate that when we talk about uh, Sheriff Cook is the sheriff of Clay County. There are segments of Clay County that you cooperate with, but they're their segments that they have their own policing force. Correct. So – 
Uh, and every state's different. And But for Florida, every county has, except for the one, has an elected sheriff. We have jurisdiction over all of the unincorporated areas of the county. We also can go into the incorporated areas. So uh, if a town or municipality, municipality, it's a big word. Big word um, is. Uh, we're from Clay County. We're from Clay County. You gotta forgive us. <laughs> Clay High graduate, nineteen eighty seven. Um, uh, it goes along with my Clay math. Um, so, if you have a municipality that decides to stand up its own police department, the the citizens of that area will pay an additional tax, and that will go to fund a police department. That police department's jurisdiction is limited to the municipal. Municipality. Good. I'm Municipal. just going to have to have you say that word for me. Just, just jump gonna, in there. Say yeah, it. Right, right, right. Like, and then everybody would be like, why is he just jumping in there with that word? So, um, but for the for the people that live in the city, typically your police departments, uh, especially in Florida, it's a, it, you have more officers per per 1,000 or uh, than than the county would because you've you've elected to pay the additional tax to have additional presence there. So our deputies can enforce laws in in the in the cities, and we have uh, at least in this part of the country in this part of the state we have mutual aid agreements. So if a if an officer from one of the towns on views something, they can take action. They have to call it in immediately, but they can take action until one of our deputies gets there to back them up or relieve them. Well, and and to use an example, I'll let you describe. This is a, the to me would be, and I'm sure we were all in agreement. This is one of the worst events ever. Something happens at a school. Correct. So you have your um, school police. We have school board. So in Clay County, we have school board police, which is paid um, through a tax. And then they have uh, officers that are assigned to each school as well as guardians, which are non-certified. Uh, well, they're guardian certified, but yes. they're not they're not law enforcement. Uh, so you have the school board police, you have the Green Cove Springs police, and then you have the Orange Park Police Department. Right. And if one of, but if, if the school board police calls you, y'all are there. Correct. If they Absolutely. need help, I want everybody to understand that they're they're they are there to help. They are there Correct. to do what needs to be done, and uh, y'all have got some amazing. You need more, but you have some amazing resources. I, I got to at the day of the deputy to see some of the things, and one day we'll talk about that. Why those? I, I think sometimes a citizen goes, I don't understand why we have this, and they did a great job of explaining. Like, well, this is so our officers and deputies. Carry careful. Yeah, I got a zapper. <laughs> this is why our deputies, because uh, I'm talking about the sheriff's office now, you know, we have this so they don't die. I mean, that's really right. it, it's right. we value life and we want to protect them. And so there's and, and they're very necessary pieces of equipment. I, they might not be used all the time, but that, sometimes you need specialized equipment. I've got that on my job. I've got a very expensive uh all in one, uh, it's a tamper that they can do a lot more, right. but, but we don't use it that often. Right. But we have it because there's a time when we need it, and I think that's that's the thing that people don't understand is there's a value for. There's it. there's yeah. another difference though between sheriffs and, and police departments is um, so the sheriff's offices typically operate the county jails. Police departments can have a small jail or a holding area, but the sheriff's offices typically operate the jails in the county, and. The sheriff's offices typically are they they enforce civil writs, so eviction notices, stuff like that, okay. are handled through the sheriff's office. Okay, I didn't Absolutely. know that. That's, that's yeah. see, I, I you learn something every day. That's so why if I, you have a uniformed deputy show up at your front door, we're here to toss you out. Yeah. <laughs> well, to talk to you peacefully. Talk to you peacefully. <laughs> yes. there, you go. Yeah. there you go. There you go. Gosh, Drew. somebody, somebody <laughs> has a background in PR. That's why he is the public information officer. <laughs> and to be clear, if, if if a Clay County sheriff officer, a sheriff deputy, shoot, I'm gonna. You guys have messed yes, me yes, up. I, I will. I, I literally. Now have, it's our fault. Yeah, I have, right, now right. it's our fault. Because now people are gonna go around calling the sheriff's officers. Yes. Yeah. Well, or worse, they're gonna be like the sheriff officer deputy, like I just did. <laughs> the sheriff deputy, and I literally have never made this mistake until the podcast because I'm very respectful. I've I've known uh, Sheriff Rutherford from Jacksonville since I was a kid. Okay. Yes, and you know. Obviously, their department set up a little bit differently. Yeah. So the city county, Duval County, the city of Jacksonville is city county consolidated. It's one of the few in the country that are. And what's funny is because I used to work there, the the patches say Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, but your collar brass says JP Jacksonville Police. Mm -hmm. So we 
We were bipolar. We didn't know what yeah. we were. We yes, just, yeah. depending on the day, which one they wanted to be. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> yes. So let's. Uh, so and again, what's really unique about Sheriff Cook is you've been a police chief. Yes. And I, and I, how do you? Can you describe the difference of of the two from having held both positions for our listeners? Yeah, and, and really, it's it's uh, it's different but the same. So, um, as a police chief, you go through job interviews. And you are selected by a city manager or city council, and you respond to them. Those are your bosses. So I reported to a city manager and updated the city council very regularly. And I, I was so blessed because I had such a good, two really good city managers that I worked for and a deputy city manager and a great city council. Uh, but I can tell you, I see how politics can interfere with police chiefs. Because if, um, you know, policemen and police chiefs and sheriffs tend to know their job, but then you have a city manager or deputy city manager, city council person that doesn't know the job can come to you and say, hey, I demand that you 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 write a ticket for for, to this person when they go by my house. Um, And and so you have to decide, do I want to keep my job or stand up to this person? Uh, So I see why a lot of there's a lot of angst and, and, and issues with police departments across the country, I would bet that most of the leaders of those police departments know exactly what to do, but they have a heavy, heavy influence uh, of politics. Absolutely. Yeah. As a sheriff, you know, I I am a constitutional sheriff. Uh, I am beholden to the citizens and nobody else. So the buck stops with me. And, you know, as a sheriff, as, as a police leader, you have to make decisions. You know, in fact, I keep a copy of the Constitution. I have it here with me. And she does. I, I, I was yes. going to comment on that, which I love because I care, usually carry one, too, yes. when, especially if I'm going to some sort of event where right. people are you know, going to talk about it because you can look it up. Like, right, right. And so my job is to uphold the Constitution, and that's not always politically popular, um, you know, whether it's gun rights or, you know, stop and frisk or due process. I, you know, it was interesting. I and. I had a phone call from a city person who uh, uh, wanted to – there was some vandalism. And and this person is a great person, so they just didn't know. But they wanted us to, uh, when we caught the kids that did the vandalism, force the kids just to clean up the park. And I was like, I'd love to be able to do that, but I'm violating their right of due process. And, you know, you think, well, that's – that, that's a minor, you know, kids, you should force the kids to clean up the park, but then you start down the slippery slope of due mm-hmm. process. What's next? So I explained to the, the city person, let us arrest them. We will be more than happy to go with you to the state attorney's office and to the judge and recommend this as a punishment. Um, but I can't take away somebody's due process. Now I think of a police chief in a very, you know, if you have a very charismatic or powerful city manager or county manager, um, Telling the police chief, no, you're not going to arrest, you know, Judson's son. He's going to clean up the park instead, or, or you don't have a job tomorrow. And and I think that's, you know, that's why there's there's to me uh, just a, a super ton of responsibility uh, being the sheriff to make sure that you're doing the right thing, even if it's not politically popular, uh, versus the constant political pressure of trying to make the city council and the city manager and the deputy city manager happy when, when they want stuff done. Oh, that's fascinating. I, I, I didn't know that. So I, I, I it's funny because I'm always thinking when you have to run for office that you have more political pressure. But when you phrase it like that, that makes perfect sense because you have your answer to the people and at the end of the day, that's – and you uphold the constitution. That makes right. your job a little bit more focused on what you need to do. Right. And And – Again, you know, you look back at the cities across the country that had riots mm-hmm. run by police chiefs. Absolutely. Because wow. they were feeling the political pressure of bosses who said, this is how you're going to handle it. Versus the sheriffs, when we say, the buck stops with me, we're not allowing this behavior. And 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 the only people I have to respond, not the only people, the people I report to are the, the, the average citizen, the average working citizen who wants a safe community. So you typically will not see um, large scale rioting in communities that have elected sheriffs. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm glad you brought that up. I would say, though, to a point you brought up, uh, I could imagine the headline of 
police chief arrest five year old for vandalism of the park. That would be a because that's how old my son is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if he takes after his dad, yeah, no, 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 sorry. The, yeah, you never know. You never know. But uh, I have a five and a seven year old. But this, even the seven year old, that's. But you, it's a great point that you have to uphold the law and right. the constitution. And, the constitution uh, is the the go by, and and it's you know it's it, it's not very long, um, but it's the go by for us. And um, again, it may not be politically popular, but it's it's the right thing to do. Our, yeah. our founding fathers, we have the constitution and that's what we're going to follow. Right. And that's yeah. why it's called constitution. Yes. Officer. Everybody yes. has the inalienable rights. Yep. You know, period. Yep. Say that yeah. five times fast. I know. I don't, think I, inalienable. I don't think I can say Municipality. it. Five times. Municipality. <laughs> <laughs> so that is fascinating. So I'm glad we, we, we kind of clarified that. If you have any questions though, about that, you can email. Yes. The sheriff. Yeah. So anybody has any questions, or any topics they want us to discuss, please email sheriff at claysheriff.com, sheriff at claysheriff.com. Before we get off this topic, oh, yeah. though, I want to bring something up. So I will have people call me and say, you know, I was, you know, 100 feet outside the city limits and this police officer pulled me over. Um, you know, is this ticket legal? And the answer is going to be yes. You know, as with any ticket that you get, you you can take it to court. But um Depending on the 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 type of issue that a a law enforcement any law enforcement officer sees, they can they can take action. Well, I think it's funny that the person's going. I mean, I did this, but but the technicality is I was a hundred feet. Now, I, listen, I have seen cases get thrown out on technicalities. On technicalities, yeah, but, that is very true. Yeah, right? yep. In fact, we had to get out there one time and measure, and it had to. It was like a thousand feet, and it was like nine hundred and ninety, and yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so it might be all depend on how you how you articulate, you know, what you saw and observed too. True, you know, true. that's and true. So if the violation happened, you know, in the jurisdiction, but you couldn't get to that person until they were out of the jurisdiction. That's and a that's good point. Still, credible stop. Right. That's all how you articulate it. Mm-hmm. I'm just envisioning when you say that, like an NFL with the with the yard yard stick, and they're like. Yeah, I'm spotting it here. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. but at the end of the day, you you still did the crime. So actually, one of the biggest grievances I ever had was with an NFL football player who shall remain nameless. Gave me. I'll ask the name after afterwards. I'll tell you off off air. Okay. Gave us so much grief about. Oh yeah, he was not nice, but wow. he doesn't he doesn't play for the Jaguars anymore. Okay, well is that's he, good. Is he yes. still playing? Oh, yeah. He's still playing. Oh, wow. Well, you know, maybe that's something we'll talk about one day. I think that what I – again, I, I applaud our sheriff department because I feel like you're very fair. And I know like you spoke of with police uh, chiefs, they might have to be more politically – you know, whatever, but that's not the way it should be. Everybody no. should be equal under the law. No, and for the record, I will say Clay County has some phenomenal police chiefs. Oh yes, they no, do I, a really good I job. I live in Green Coast Springs, so I technically have. I mean, I well, not technically, I do. I have a police chief, and mm-hmm. and they do a great job. Uh, and so I'm very, very happy here. Feel very safe here, and I feel very safe in the county. And we're very fortunate to live here. So, and I, I think another thing that is really um, you see a lot, especially in Northeast Florida, in the state in general. Um, but especially Northeast Florida is the cooperation between the police chiefs and the sheriffs to work together. Uh, I know there's some parts of the the country where the police chiefs and the sheriffs don't even talk to each other. Do not and, get along. Wow. Yeah, do not get along at all. And I and you know I think a lot of the challenges that we have as law enforcement in general uh, is because there's no relationship there for for whatever reason. But in, in this area, we we do work well together. That's great. And I, and again, I, I think it's because of your attitude of communication. And when, when the other departments have that, it, it just, look, it communicate. If you're in a relationship and you don't communicate, it's going to fall apart. Right. It's called divorce. It's yes. Definitely, so, definitely. so communication is key and it's something you're not afraid of, which is again, well, if you listen to the first episode, why Sheriff Cook wanted to come on, on and do this podcast because reaching new people and having a longer format to, to communicate with people of issues and, and, discussions i think i think it's important to understand i think i think our citizens when again we're breaking down the this is a person get to know them better uh, from that one line statement pulled out of uh out of a news conference it's not the same thing correct and correct. and I, I i appreciate you more listening to you so i hope everybody listens does does also so we're gonna take a quick couple second break we'll hear some music and then we'll be right back you're listening to never off the
And we're back. So I think it's important to talk about, we briefly talked about it last episode, but it, I, we need to almost do this every episode where we talk about what's going on nationally and then, and then how that affects us locally. Uh, so I'll let you just go off, Sheriff. Yeah. I, so what we're seeing nationally in law enforcement um, is a, a couple of things. And I, I wrote down a couple of notes. So recruiting and retention. So, there, you know, following especially the George Floyd incident, and, and I'm not saying what that officer did was right. OK, but the 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 scrutiny of every law enforcement officer because of the actions of one really put a, a bad taste in the mouth of of young people who maybe had an interest in law enforcement. So recruiting people to come in it has been very difficult. Combined with the fact that young people today, things are just different for them. They have different responsibilities, different priorities, different desires, different experiences that they want. So we, you know, you take a, a law enforcement, which tends to be slow to evolve, and, and we're trying to recruit young people, and then there's this national um, rhetoric that's anti-law enforcement. So that's made recruiting very difficult. We'll, we'll talk about it. I'll talk in a minute about how we're doing some things here. And then on top of that is retention. So we have literally had people leave because they are tired of waking up every day and seeing anti-police stories. And they, they internalize it and they, they just don't – they can't handle the stress of it. Uh, so that recruiting and retention across the country – has been very difficult. Yeah, I, I can see that. There's, um, first of all, we're gonna let we're gonna let deputy deputy cough, Ford cough. cough. The deputy Ford cough. Ford, Ford, <laughs> Ford. Sorry. Uh, he's, he's not gonna come back. It's okay. You know he's not gonna come back. I, I'm a lazy editor on podcasts. I just let people. I just let the cough stay and stuff like that. Make, yes. You hear the this? It's we're real. Human. You know, we're not we're breaking. This is human. real. That's right. This is real. Uh, but I think it's important that before we we move on though. Maybe tell our listeners how they could, if they want a career in law enforcement, what's the best path? I mean, what should they do if they want to join Clay County Sheriff's Office? You know, actually, so for those, especially kids in high school, um, we have a great Explorer program that actually, you know, uh, teaches those who want to get into law enforcement. Um, but it teaches them leadership skills also. Um, but if they want to get into law enforcement, they can see from a young age what it takes, the drive uh, that it will take to to become a professional in this uh, in this profession here. So, uh, you know, but you got to, number one, stay out of trouble, you know, and, you know, if you're looking to apply, the sheriff's office has a great program. We have what we call public service aides. So a lot of the young folks will start off in that career path. They can come and work for the sheriff's office as a public service aide where they'll actually get to know the agency and how we operate um, because they also respond to accidents that doesn't involve any type of criminal activity. So they're getting to see how, you know, they're working side by side with deputies, um, how auto accidents work, how do you handle those auto accidents, and you're still, you know, building some communication skills uh, with the people out in the community. And then, you know, once you, 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 you start that path, you know, the sheriffs have the sheriff has been great with actually taking internal candidates or internal employees who want to get into the law, law enforcement profession and sending them through the, the academy so that then they're already here with the agency. We already know their work ethic. So now let's send them into the, the, the academy so that now they'll come back and be a deputy with the sheriff's office. They already know our, 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 our codes. They already know, you know, policy and procedure. But you're kind of grooming them into the path that they want to be. So, you know, for young folks out there that want to come work for the sheriff's office or anyone who, you know, may not live in Clay County that want to come and work for the sheriff's office, all you have to do is apply, you know, and, and, and just take a chance. But, you know, we want people who are going to be dedicated. We want people who, you know, will be leaders and, and, and actually be embedded in with the community um, because this agency here is embedded in the community itself. And we have great working relationships and we want those people to come work here. So there's there are ways that young folks and people who aren't, you know, so young can come work for the sheriff's office and actually feel like a family. You know, He's got so. gray in his beard. I was touching the gray in his beard as he said, not so young. Because um, uh, two things, to, to piggyback off of what uh, Drew just said, our governor uh, has allocated money. So any law enforcement 
officer, any law enforcement deputy from out of state can come to Florida and get a five thousand dollars signing bonus. Oh wow, that's yes. great. Yeah. That's a great so, piece of legislation. Legislation. I can't yeah. So if you're if you're a law enforcement officer and you're out of state and you're interested in Florida, you have to do something called an equivalency of training, and the many of the uh, uh, state colleges offer it. The state academies. And it's typically a two-week course, and that's what Deputy Ford did when he came down here from Absolutely. Philly. So you do the, the equivalency of training, and then you can get hired by an agency. And the, the Florida certification is good anywhere in the state of Florida. So you get hired by the agency, and then you get the $5,000 bonus from the state for, for joining law. And um, let me tell you something. Our, you know, politics aside, this governor and this legislature, legislature that we have here in Florida are so pro-law enforcement. They and really are. They, they yeah, really it's, are. It, they've made it a very um, positive uh, place to work. Uh, and one of the things when we talk about recruiting and retention that um, that I like to, to tell the, the people that are interested in, in law enforcement, especially the Clay County Sheriff's Office, is uh, – and this is something that we learned in talking to young people that were coming in – is they want to experience different things. So when I came on, it was about – just having a career, getting to retirement, you know, and then um, it, it, it didn't matter to me as long as I was just there. Kids today, they want to do different things. So we have to actively talk to them about, well, you know, you could do a little bit of time on the street and then you can be uh, a, a detective and then you can be on the honor guard. You can be on the dive team, all the fun stuff. That's what really keeps them engaged. And so we allow um, we we have a variety of opportunities for all of our members to uh, to additional fun stuff because young people today want that experience. The other thing too that's interesting uh, is it used to be that when people joined law enforcement, they stayed there for their entire life, uh, it, it, you know, entire twenty or thirty year career. And uh, the reality of today is, young people come in, they'll stay five to seven years, and they just go on to a different career. And so we have to figure out how do we balance the investment that we make in them if we know that there, a, a lot of them are going to be leaving at the five to seven year mark. And then how do we keep hiring uh, knowing that that's actually happening? That makes a lot of sense. Um, <clears throat> real quick. Uh, so you can go to your website to apply, right? Yep. ClaySheriff.com. Yeah, ClaySheriff.com. Okay, that's, that's, and, and by the way, I totally hijacked this segment. We're going to go back to what we said we'd talk about, but I just found this was really important. Uh, we, we prepare our show and then I go and throw a grenade in it. And Hijacking is a crime. It is. It is a crime. It is <laughs> so, a crime. Federal crime. <laughs> but I do have one follow-up question that I think people will want to know about. If So you have, which I think is great, what I call in my profession, apprenticeship, basically with the young Correct. rangers. Of, of That is to me the way our focus of our education should be first and foremost. But if somebody goes to traditional route and they're going to go to college first, is there – obviously there's criminology. Is there other degrees that you would encourage them to explore if that's their passion? Any sort of – Criminal justice degree, criminology degree, public administration, public administration. you know, psychology, yeah. you know, we, we cybersecurity. Oh, cyber yeah. Cybersecurity is huge. Huge. yeah, that is something of the future. And yeah. it's on my list of things to talk about for, for, you know, trends that we're seeing. But really any, almost any degree uh, is beneficial because as law enforcement officers, we wear so many different hats. So, well, and he, I mean – you you could fly a helicopter. I mean, right. for for the department, there's things you could do that I don't think people realize that you, you you've got to hire a lot of diverse people to really be able to function. Absolutely. Properly. I mean, we have canines, dive team, honor, honor guard, honor motorcycles, guard, motorcycles, bicycles, yes, uh, the so community many. engagement, PIO, PIO. Although Drew's so, not going anywhere. So <laughs> so for those you know who may you know love journalism but want to come into the law enforcement field. Perfect. 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 Yeah. Well, great. Well, I think they, I would encourage anybody listening to find out more. Go to the website, and if you need to shoot an email, shoot an email. And uh, who would be the best, best email contact if they're they're looking for a career? You can do sheriff at claysheriff.com, and we'll get it to our recruiters. There you go. So yep. you should do that. But now – Let's talk. Let's about go you. back to trends. Let's go back to trends. <laughs> trends but that, yes. it was a recruiting trend. Was, yeah. I just took it a little further than maybe everybody was prepared for. <laughs> right, right. So you know, we talked about recruiting and retention. So a couple of other things that we we saw in 2022, and and I'll and I said this the first episode. Fentanyl. Yeah. Fentanyl is just redefining uh, redefining law enforcement and and fire EMS response. Um, you know, we're, we're carrying cans and cans of Narcan with us now. Because so many people are are overdosing on fentanyl, and the really scary thing about fentanyl is that uh, 
So you, you let's say you have a, a 15 or 16 year old kid that smokes pot. Okay, no big deal. Um, and they spend a hundred bucks a month with their pot dealer to get two joints. I don't. It tells you how much I know about drugs. Joints, joints, joints. All the narcotics. I'm, just, there I'm like, naughty because I'm like, oh, the sounds real. Well, at least she didn't say reefer. You know, she reefer. didn't say reefer. They're, the they're buying the reefer. <laughs> yeah. uh. All the narcotics detectives out there, are like, she has no idea what she's talking about. I don't. I don't. Not with narcotics. Okay. So, but I, but I will say this. So you have a young person going out there buying weed. Um, and they're spending a little bit of money with their wheat. Drew is still laughing at I know. me. Well, you could call it the pot. The That's pot. What I call it. The <laughs> pot. The pot. So they're buying the pot. They're buying the pot. <laughs> <laughs> they're buying the pot. And the, the drug dealer wants more money from them. So the drug dealer will lace it with fentanyl because it's very addictive oh. and get the kid hooked on the fentanyl. Well, most drug dealers are not very smart. And, you know, it only takes a couple of granules of fentanyl to kill you. So they put, you know, little six little granules and it should be three and they've just killed a 16 year old kid who, who thought they were just smoking pot. And that's to me, the really scary thing about fentanyl is, uh, it, they're lacing everything with it. And, you know, we just did a bust, um, here in Clay County a couple of months ago, the triple sevens drug bust. And we had enough fentanyl to kill what 4 million people. I mean, it was, oh wow it, it was crazy. It's frightening. And, and, you know, there is some conversation, and I don't want to get into the conspiracy theories, but, you know, you could weaponize that. If you took yeah, fentanyl and put it on a drone and released it over a football stadium. Well, yeah. you know, you say that, and I know it's conspiracy theories, and I'm not going to, we won't go very far into this, but I do think as law enforcement, you have to think of every scenario Absolutely. that it could be done because yes. we've seen, hor- I mean, 9-11 before that, nobody thought that would happen. No, you never you, thought about a plane going into a building uh, intentionally. Yeah. So you, you have to – there are bad people out there that will do really bad things. Yes. And thank goodness we have great deputies uh, here in Clay County, you know, protecting us. And, uh, you know, and, and I think where – I'm going to go really quickly onto this. Remember – you guys have a lot to protect and you get called out if one thing goes wrong. Uh, but what people I think on the, the laymen and women don't understand is how much you prevent it. Like right. there, the one disaster can happen that you get called out for on the press, but yeah, you, you tried, you did everything in your power and you just, you can't be everywhere at once. And that's no. And when you have a lone, especially when you have a lone wolf type person yeah, that doesn't right. talk about their, their intentions. Right. Um, you know, that's what really scares me is the person sitting in their underwear in their trailer yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. making it, pipe bombs or something. But you always said something uh, uh, that always touches home and it's how you manage that crisis. Right. You know, because you're right, you know, for the 15 that we know we prevented, you know, in that one lone wolf. But how you how do you manage that particular incident when it does happen? And and I think that's what defines you, defines, number one, the leader in your agency, but then defines the agency itself because everybody's trained and prepared. Yeah. And, yeah. and that might be something I think we'll jot this down for future. I think that might be fun to bring in the person, you know, like maybe your SWAT person and have them describe to our listeners what, what we do in that scenario. Right. Uh, if we can. I know that some, yeah, no, some, no, some things need to be secret. I mean, I don't think people <laughs> understand that. You you are extremely transparent, Sheriff. But at the end of the day, if, you know, there could be things you can't say because it will affect public safety. Sure. And people have to respect yeah. that. No, we, we have operational things that happen behind the scenes that we, yeah. you know, we, we can't reveal to the bad guy. So, but uh, no, I think that would be a great topic to discuss. Um, we, we talk a lot about managing crisis uh, in so much that... Uh, administrative people in our agency, if we have a crisis hit, they all have a job. So, you know, I have a, 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 a civilian assistant chief who normally runs supply. Her job, if a crisis happens, is to go to the communication center and assist there. So all of our, I mean, we, it's something, uh, they, these guys probably get tired of me talking about it, but you have to prepare, you pray for the best and you prepare for the worst. That, that's a good way to put it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now jumping back to fentanyl. So I have a question for you. I'm going to throw you a little bit under the bus here. So if you had a magic wand and you were in charge of all law enforcement in the United States, and because I know how this is, there is a way to solve a problem, but are people willing to pay the price to solve the problem? And so how would you solve that problem if if you were a queen of the United States 
and in charge. That sounds good. Queen of the United Queen States. Queen of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> I was homecoming queen yeah. at one time. Oh, wow. There you go. I still have my tiara. <laughs> That's pretty I'm awesome. I'm going to wear it during the next podcast. And we will take that picture. We will post. take that right, picture. Right. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I think we have to shut our borders. I, you know, politics aside, and I said this the last episode, we have to shut our borders. Is it going to stop all drugs coming in? Nope. But it'll definitely, you know, we're, we're, we're drinking out of a fire hose right now and we got to get it down to a trickle. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know what it's going to take. Um, I know at the Florida Sheriff's Association and Florida sheriffs in general, um, we've let our feelings be known that fentanyl is killing our community. And, and what do you do? I mean, we normally are going to talk about local issues later in there, but I think since we're on the subject, we should. What do we do locally to solve the problem? I mean, not, we're never, uh, let's be clear. We can't solve the problem without the help of shutting down the borders. There, all we can do is apply a band, I, in my opinion, sure. a, a bandage to uh, a patient that needs much more help from a thoracic surgeon. Right, right. Uh, but, but that's something that Congress is going to have to handle and, and have the fortitude to be able to solve the problem. And will they ever? We don't know. But – what do we do to, for triaging in the in in the short term? I, I think there's three prongs to this that have to be that have to be addressed simultaneously. One, education. We have to talk to kids candidly at the right age about drugs and about weed and about the 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 pill that somebody says is a Xanax, but it's laced with fentanyl. Mm-hmm. So I think we have to to share with kids that the the drugs that are out there today, there's the potential of dying because you've tried it one time. So I think there's the education piece. You know, then I think there is the treatment piece. And in Clay County, uh, we have a treatment program that's run through our fire department that we partner with them on. And if somebody comes forward and says, I need help, we we do everything we can to get them the help that they need. And we even start that before. If we have drug addicts come into our jail, we we offer them this opportunity to start that, their shots that they get. And Listen, I've heard people say they don't work, whatever. If we can save one person, then then it works, right? So we we offer that to people before they leave the jail. The jail. So we have the education, the treatment, and then we have enforcement. And we are uh, we consistently enforce the law. Uh, we consistently enforce, uh, you know, drug eradication. It is, you know, we're swimming upstream, but we have to keep the hammer down. You know, we we talked about this. I'm not sure if it was during one of the podcasts or or offline, but. You're, you the level of drugs and the level of crime that you see in the community is what you allow. And if we make it very well known that we have zero tolerance for the drugs, um, you know, are we going to get it all? No, but we're going to work to get it all. So as a citizen, I know, like, I, and I'm a big believer in this. I've, I heard this before and somebody can tell me I'm wrong. That's fine about this. But I, I've heard about with children that start discussing it with them before it influences them. So you should have that discussion. Do you believe in that philosophy? I, I, I believe it. Listen, it's up to each individual parent, you know, to, to make the decision on when they want to talk to their kids. Um, you know, and, and, and I can only speak from personal experience for myself, you know, having three daughters and a son, um, you know, I which does to... give you a lot of personal experience. So let's <laughs> <So, that's> be <laughs> clear. <laughs> so, and, 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 but I, I chose to talk to them at an early age, you know, and, and even as the years go by, you know, my youngest daughter is nine now. So I talk to her about it now, you know, just to let her know, Hey, there are things out there. And some may say I'm talking to her too early, but I want to make sure that I keep my child protected. You know, my son who's 15 is in high school and have my, my other daughter who's 12, who's, who's getting ready to go to high school soon. So, and, you know, being an SRO in a school, uh, especially in middle school, I've seen countless now, times. Really quickly, because our listeners probably don't. We okay. get used to acronyms. SRO. <laughs> SRO. Oh, sorry. School, so, school Resource, school resource, resource office. office. I knew what it was, yes, but yes. I also knew that, that there's going to be people going. That's a going, good point. That's no. why we have Shelton around, because we get into this police <laughs> yes. lingo, and he yes. says, I, yeah. Very good. Sorry, go ahead. So being a school resource officer, I, I seen so many kids, and we're talking about middle school. So we're talking about kids in the seventh and eighth grade who were vaping who were smoking marijuana, the pot. who were taking the pot, the pot, who were, you know, taking pills from, from other kids. And the reality is, you know, it's happening in middle school, but some of these kids, when you talk to them, they started vaping or started taking drugs when they were in elementary school, fifth and sixth grade. So the reality is, is that 
I've, I've seen in personal experience that sometimes talking to your kids early because they're in school will help, you know, them understand, uh, you know, hey, this is why you shouldn't do this. Sometimes you just have to be real with your kids in, on a certain topic, because at the end of the day, if your kid does take something, they can do something one time when it comes to some sort of pill or they decided they wanted to take a vape. That one time can be the last time. I, I yeah, think so. that's great. And, and I agree. I, I personally do. Uh, my children are five and seven. And look, I keep it real simple. Like, don't do drugs. We'll talk about, you know, right. Right. you understand more, <laughs> but let's uh, let, let me, while you're really into everything I have to say and agree with me, let right. me be clear so that right. there, that we don't tolerate that and it will hurt you. And he's at my seven year olds asked like, what does it do? And I was like, well, the problem is it can be a, you do it once and you die or are addicted. I, right. I don't think people realize that. Like no. that is very hard to grasp that there are drugs and fentanyl is one of them. You're hooked. You're and it is in, I, and I know you probably, you can get off of it, but you're still hooked. You're still right. going to always have that desire for the rest of your life in a way that I don't think anybody that's ever faced that problem. I, I'm sure that people who have suffered with addiction do understand it, but short of that, you probably don't understand how powerful that is. Yeah. And, and you know, something Drew said makes sense. I mean, and I, and I completely agree. It's a parental decision when to have the conversation, yes. but I think. As a parent, you have to have the conversation. I know four of my kids are adopted, and the reason they were put into foster care is because both parents had addiction issues. So we started talking about it very early on because the likelihood of them becoming addicts if they try it once is very high. And um, so this was a conversation that we started having almost immediately Mm -hmm. with with our kids when we got them is... If your friends are probably going to do it, they're probably going to ask you to do it. Um, Just know that the reason you were put into foster care is because your parents were addicts and the likelihood of you being an addict is very high if you try drugs. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's it's funny because my especially my son, he's very animated and and discloses everything. Um, (laughs) Will come home and tell me, Mom, they were smoking weed and the and marijuana in the bathroom and i'm like well what did you do he goes i left good um, for him yeah you should tell him it's called the pot the pot, the pot. yes but yes other than that he handled it perfectly yeah and and so you know to me that's uh, the reinforcement that the conversations that we've had with them now you know you know they get to college you don't know totally you know different. so but you just i think you have to, i think it's a parental issue parents rights parents need to talk but parents need to talk so right and and maybe one day I, I don't want to talk about this now because we're we're going long on time here and there, we got to get back to a few other important things but maybe we'll try to get like if you're not comfortable here you know talk to your 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 principal who who can bring in that right. discussion uh, we'll That's try that's a to, great topic yeah so we'll, we'll, we'll add that to the list we'll add that to the list um, I got we'll, one more issue for twenty oh yeah well I do have one though question I think okay, people yes. do need to know from citizen perspective if you're seeing this in your community who do they call. Do they call 911? Do they call – is it better to not slam the 911 system? What's the best resource for a citizen? And they're probably wrong too. I got to point out, sometimes you as a citizen think you are saving the world and I'm sure you all appreciate that. But sometimes you're going, look, they were just fertilizing their lawn. Like, So I actually – so for people who, who suspect mm-hmm. – you know, that they either live near a drug house or they see, you know, some sort of drug sales or transactions or something just doesn't look right. You know, Safer Watch, you know, is one of the tools we use and we, we tell folks download the Safer Watch app, you know, and they can submit a tip. They can actually take pictures. It's safe to do so discreetly. Yes. You know, they can they rec- record a video of, of, you know, the activity that may be happening. They can record a car. Whatever the case may be, get the tag number and they can submit that through the Safer Watch tip where it comes into our real time crime center. And they our real time crime center and our communications actually is looking and vetting the information and they're dispatching that out, you know, and deputies who get that uh, that particular call, they can actually sit up there and view actually what the people look like uh, that, you know, who, uh, you know, they, they suspect or the vehicle, whatever the case may be. So and then also our website where people can submit a tip. You know, uh, through our website, uh, you know, if they have information or they can send an email, you know, to sheriff at clay sheriff dot com. And one thing I have to tell you, because our sheriff is very responsive. 
when it comes. She's she the idea fairy, but she's also when it comes to <laughs> when it I comes to those fairy. emails. I have you an know, idea. <laughs> those emails come in, and she she said, "Hey, what, what do y'all think about this? Hey, can we get somebody to look at that?" So, if somebody has information or a tip about that. Safer Watch. Clay, uh, sheriff at claysheriff.com or go to our website and submit a tip and I guarantee uh, the, the information will get to I us. will say though, you know, back in the early 90s when I was a young officer, um, drug dealers stood on the street corner. N- nobody stands on the street corner anymore. Drug investigations are really much more complex and difficult because people do it from inside their house through social media or media. Yeah. Like they'll text each other. So instead of me standing on the corner waiting for somebody to drive by asking for drugs, we text each other and I go meet him at the store and we exchange it. So um, uh, the, the, the drug investigations these days are, are a little bit more complex and cumbersome, but we still, we still take it seriously and work them hard. And we will talk about that in another segment, another day. Cause I, that's what I want people to listen to understand is we're going to get some in-depth, yes. interesting things yep. that you as citizens don't understand that, you, that you're happy to talk about. It's right. just, you got to have a format to talk about it. And so, but before we cut, we do have, Another topic you wanted to – some more well, one more, trending. Yeah. So leveraging technology, which I think oh, is very right. interesting. Um, you know, at, at the larger agencies, the New Yorks, the LAs, the Miamis, they, they've been doing it for quite a while. But technology has become accessible and affordable now for the midsize agencies. So how do we – how do we utilize technology to be a force multiplier for us? And uh, Drew mentioned our real-time crime center. We're actually going to rebrand it as Clay Rock, Clay Real-Time Operations Center. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Clay Rock. Clay Rock. <laughs> here today. And, and I just I, unveiled it, right? Yeah, right here to, you, you unveiled it. I'm going to try and create a song for that. Okay. Clay Rock. I'm opening Clay Rock, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we do have, you know, maybe you can get some Leonard Skinner stuff because of the, the local tie-in. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> it just sounds like an opening. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like play me some Skinner when I go to the website. To- <laughs> play me some Clay Rock. Um, and by the way, real quick, I have been blessed to have gotten a tour of your facilities and have seen. It, I'm assuming that's what it is with all where all yeah, the screens all the are. cameras are. It yeah. is amazing. It is amazing how great of a resource that I, when I was there, something happened real time. They needed. To, I think I, I I don't go into it in case I you know like something have going to call on. you in as a witness. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, but well, they were like, they got busy. So we walked out. I mean, it was, it was, there was nothing going on. Not, there was not nothing going on. They were working, but they were, they were able to talk to me while working. And then suddenly I realized something was going on. So they, they, you know, I stepped out, but the point was, it was, it was amazing. And it's a great resource. It really is. It is. And, and so, you know, how do we balance individual privacy? Because we don't ever want to violate anybody's individual privacy. But when you're driving down the road or you're on public streets, having, uh, cameras uh, in place so that when a crime does occur, we can very quickly get a vehicle description, a, a suspect description, a tag. Um, and and so what's been really neat for the last year or two is the availability and affordability of technology for law enforcement. And then how do we utilize that in such a way that it that it benefits the community? Right. And and I think where you have your agency has and it's correct call the agency, right? That's is you that call it agency. agency. The department. Yeah, the department. department. Your department. Okay. Yeah. Your department. because uh, I've messed up every other description of, of your department. Uh but it is very respectful of privacy. I think yes. that's you're yeah. very respectful of the law and privacy. And but where a system like this is probably the most effective is like a real time kidnapping or something like that. That ability to track somebody and save a life is where you know absolutely it, it shines. And in, and in fact, um, speaking of kidnapping, we had somebody several a while ago say that they were kidnapped. And we had cameras there and we were able to actually go back and watch the, I'm doing air quotes, victim, uh, walk up to the vehicle, hug the driver, walk around to the other side of the vehicle and get into the car. And so the whole, I was dragged into a car story was, was tossed out the window and, and, you know, potentially saved a, an individual from charges right. that were extremely serious. So it, it, you know, it, it has worked both ways for us, but we've been able to um, solve some um, some crimes because of, of the Clay Rock capabilities and the detectives that we have in there monitoring the cameras and working in conjunction with patrol and the detectives 
uh, to follow up cases. Well, and you know, something, again, we're going to break soon and then talk about some of the, your goals for the upcoming year. But I, I, Speaking of technology, like, cause I like, uh, I like drones and I feel like that's, there's going to, you're going to see that yes. being used a yep. lot more in policing and safety. I mean, I, I mean, talk about the safest way to at least get a view of something where there could be a shooter, where there, a situation but, you need to see. But again, you know, so two things in the drone, the drone world, we love drones that we've got two issues that we're waiting on right now is one we're waiting on, um, the approval list for what drones we can use because we're, we're not supposed to be using drones from China. And uh, the other, which actually is probably smart. smart I mean, right. I mean, you, if you're, you, but they you have, have our to understand. iPhones. I, I don't oh yeah, no, yeah. there's, there, but China is spying on us. That's my opinion. Right, right. That's just Judson Sapp's opinion, China. not the official. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would agree. Um, but uh, so, and then the legalities of flying over somebody's backyard. Yes, I can. So see that. and so, you as a citizen with a drone have much more. Uh, ab- ability to to fly anywhere you want versus us mm-hmm. in the law enforcement capacity. So we have to make sure that we understand that completely. But we just uh, took in a couple of drones and we plan to start deploying drones this year. Yeah, I, I think it's the future. And, I, and we'll have many discussions about the future of law enforcement. But yes. we're going to take a short break and then we're going to bring it back locally. I, if you're listening outside, you should stay though because you might learn something that you can bring to your community, which I think will improve everybody's law enforcement across the United States. So you're listening to Never Offer. And we're back. Okay, so we've had a fascinating show for me anyways, and I hope you you as citizens who are listening or other law enforcement people that might be listening too enjoyed it too. But I really want to talk now about the focus your focus for 2023. Yeah. So what we're looking for here in Clay County for 2023 really falls into one of three categories. And and these are important because everything that we do, every initiative that we undertake, everything that we buy, we want to tie back to one of these three priorities. Um, the first one is growth. So at, we are a very fast growing county. Uh, in in our state, the deputy per 1,000 ratio is 1.79. We are at 1.19, so we're already half a deputy behind. Um, now, that is not the only measurement that we use, but it gives you some indication of our staffing challenges. Um, so we're, we're, you know, how do we continue to provide a, a level of service even though we're, we're behind on staffing. Uh, and part of that is that technology that we discussed earlier and, and leveraging technology. So how do we uh, maintain a level of service with growth? Uh, we we stay tied into what the county is doing and what the developers are doing, because this is going to affect staffing and manpower issues. Uh, and then, you know, through that growth, how do we improve efficiencies? Up until two and a half years ago, we were still doing paper timesheets with over 700 employees. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, just even little things like that is how do we keep up with growth, maintain the level of service, and how do we do that through being flexible, nimble, uh, efficient, all of those things. So every everything that we do, um, again, has to be tied back to one of these three categories, and one of them is growth. The other one that I'm I'm really big on is relationships. There's a saying out there that you you don't build relationships in a crisis. And I've been in a lot of crisis events and incidents in my lifetime. And I would tell you that's a very true statement. So we focus on relationships. Priority, focus on relationships with community. Uh, we, we have to have genuine, candid, honest conversations with the community. If we can tell them, tell them. If we can't, tell them why we can't. Never lie. Um, and if we're wrong, we own it and, and we move on. I mean, we, we handle 250,000 calls for service a year, not going to get them all right all the time. But if you have a relationship with somebody ahead of time, it's much easier to work out um, the wrongs or the differences. Uh, we also really focus on relationships with each other, having the respect to know that all of us have a job to do. And I, I need to make sure I'm not doing anything that's going to make your job more difficult uh, or your job uh, harder. If there's information you need to know, I need to share it with you. So we focus on relationships with the community. 
uh, with, with each other. And then for me, uh, you know, not only the community, but the other elected officials. So I have to have a, a working relationship with other elected officials to get the the uh, business of the sheriff's office done. And then the third category for us is crime. I mean, that is it's the third category, but it's always the first category. It's it's why we exist. And so how do we fight crime? You know, and that goes back to being nimble with resources. Uh, we, we pay attention to crime trends, uh, short-term crime trends, and the long-term crime trends. We, we I think we talked about it briefly earlier, cyber, cyber attacks, uh, child exploitation, human trafficking, uh, those sorts of issues, the fentanyl issue. So what are the crime trends? And then how do we adjust what we're doing to make sure we're addressing those crime trends before they get too bad? And then honestly, you know, not being afraid to sunset things. You know, I, I find it interesting when, um, you know, uh, some agencies still have these units that exist but that crime is really not an issue anymore, or it's so minor, there's no reason why a, a, the, the patrol deputy couldn't handle it. So, you know, not, not being afraid to evaluate our units. And if, if something is not an issue anymore, let's dissolve it and use those resources for the, the crime trends that we see coming down the track. So uh, those are our three areas. Uh, we're really proud of some of the programs that we're, we're working on. We've been doing a co-responder program. Uh, we're going to formally announce it again. We've unveiled it here on the podcast. <laughs> I need to stop doing this. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> first, you hear it first here. Hear People it are going to go, well, I guess I better listen. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> um, we've been piloting a co-responder program, uh, and we, we wanted to pilot it before we talked about it because, again, it's about finding what works right with our community. So we don't have mental health professionals that ride with the deputies. But just, we just don't have that volume, but we have a partnership with our local mental health provider so when a deputy responds to a call, if the mental health counselor is the more appropriate person that should be there, we call them out and they respond to under to us in under an hour. So that's been oh, wow, working. That's yeah. So we're going to be talking about more about that. We're really focusing on child exploitation next year. Uh, um, we're going to be focusing on the drones that I mentioned, uh, even internally, some updated um, software to make everybody's life easier. Uh, what else are we working on? Days of Deputy Days has of been deputy. a huge hit. Hammer and Hope. Yes. yes. Um, and the Days of Deputy thing is is to me, like I, I've t- spoke about it before, but it is it is fascinating. Uh, you you go and you basically get a crash course in your job, including the uh, where you we, – we, I got to do two scenarios and uh, one of the times I had to shoot. And you shoot with a uh, – I think it's a real Glock, but it's got uh, – Sims. With a Sims. Sim. Yeah. But it shoots yeah. uh, paint basically. Right. Um, I mean, I shoot a lot, so it wasn't as uncomfortable, but there was one of our, I think one of, I'll throw, I won't say the name, but one of our county commissioners was there and they were, they, I mean, they're huge, you know, two A people, but they don't shoot regularly. So they, and the stress of the situation, but there is what the point is the stress of the situation in a simulation. And I couldn't imagine what y'all go through on a regular basis. And that's right. why it's important. Well, I that's why we, people would attend it. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's why we decided to do it. So we, we had in place. The Citizens Academy, which is great, but that's a that's a ten week commitment, right. and that's a that's a big commitment. And then we have the the ride along, the traditional police ride along, which is fine. But for me, um, if you get a night where it's slow, you you really haven't really gained anything. So we came up with the day as a deputy, and so at the day as a deputy, we, we have typically three three use of force scenarios that you have to make a split second decision. Uh, we have a static display where we'll have like our canine out there, our marine units, some of our other stuff that we have. And then we do, because um, this drives me crazy, we have uh, the, the radar gun. And we have oh, a car drive yes. by and we have people, <laughs> how fast do you think that car was going? Yeah. 100 miles an hour. Yep. Okay, here's the yeah. radar gun. It's going 30. <laughs> yes. And and so it really is an eye opener for people to see that the average human cannot estimate speed. I, I completely understand that. I live in... A, a community, but and you're always when you're walking, you're going, man. And then They're of course, flying by. But I have been driving the speed limit when the person's trying to pass me too. So I, you know, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you get you get both. But it's a great program. I think again, that's what is amazing about your department is what y'all do with the community. I know what you probably maybe feel. This. I'm gonna let you answer this question, but I, I will sell, tell you this for the listener: our sheriff is out there everywhere. In the community, you are there at events. You're doing constantly. Uh, you know, I get to text you, and I know that you're like 
doing this, doing this, doing this. Uh, your life is, a, I mean, you probably, your scheduler must have a nightmare trying to keep you, because you're so active in the community. Shout out to Miss Denise. Yeah, Miss Denise. Oh, yes. 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 She, she's she the one that keeps me in line. But I bet you, 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 I know this from from my past, people will be like, well, you never do anything. But you're like, come on. I'm like, I, from sun up to sun down. Right. And I will tell you, from sun up to sun down, I always know you're out there in our community. Uh, you're either working or communicating with people or preparing. And uh, I think that's something that the average citizen, you might not see it that day because this is a huge county. Yes. The county is huge. She might be in Keystone that day. You know, that you don't know and where. And despite what people say, I do spend quite a bit of time in Keystone. A lot of time. A lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yep. that, that's important. I think the listeners need to understand that. And they need to help educate other people that this is one of the hardest working sheriffs in Florida. Oh, thank you. And, and please, if you hear somebody say different, correct them. Because, yeah. again, she's taking – we do an hour show, but it takes longer to record that. Simultaneously answering texts, taking phone calls, working nonstop. Yeah. And, you know, I'm really p- proud of our communications platforms. Um, so, Drew, jump in if I'm forgetting something. So we do a senior newsletter, uh, which we love because it's bigger paper, bigger font, uh, and it's a nice story every month for our seniors to read. We have Facebook. Facebook. Twitter. And what's the at Twitter? We should give them all the how at, they reach at C C S O F L. You know, because there is a lot of you know because that's C-C-S-O- easy to remember. I'm gonna be- <laughs> right, but see, here's the thing: C C S O F C C S O F L. Because truth be told, there's a lot of C C S O agencies in Florida, uh, and so you know the F L is with what makes us stand right, out for us. Right. Yep. So. so that's our Twitter and then we've got Instagram. Twitter, Instagram, same handle. Okay, that's good. Are we yeah. still doing TikTok videos? We are still doing TikTok, which is the same handle. Okay. Uh so and um you know safer YouTube, watch. safer watch. Yeah, we, we me, out is somebody dancing on, on one of your TikTok videos because that's the we, truth. So so you know the, the I'm a terrible dancer. <laughs> Drew asked me one time to do something and, and I haven't been asked in right. like a year. So yeah. but but she did a great job. It got a lot of views. We we've done we haven't been as active as we want it to be on TikTok, but it is a it's a great platform. It's really trying to get. We want to make sure you put the right content yes. on there, you know. So for that, you got to have the right people. Yeah, no, as I don't like TikTok myself, but I understand why people do, especially right. younger people. Do. Right. And then we have the the podcast now. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, right. So you know, uh, and so we are we are out there messaging. We're out there telling the story. We're out there sharing. We're out there answering questions and. You know, for for any age of person, you should be able to find a, a communications platform for you to to hear the story of the Clay County Sheriff's Office, which I think is is very important. Um, you know, I, I just as an industry, we cannot lo- rely on traditional media to to tell the full story of of what it is we do. It our what we do is not a fifteen second blurb. Right. It is a it is a novel and. Um, so that that's why we when the opportunity came to do the podcast, we were like, yes, because this is just another platform. And as people send questions in, uh, we can answer their questions yeah. on the podcast. And, right. and so if anybody has a question about what's happening in law enforcement or the Clay County Sheriff's Office, you can email the question to sheriff at claysheriff.com and we will get those. And if they're appropriate. Yeah, we will if answer they're it. appropriate. <laughs> no, and, and to be clear, if there's any if there's not going to be any censoring, but. I my job is to try to keep the show moving and make it entertaining. So I'm, you know, if if you ask a question that maybe a lot of people really don't want us to spend twenty minutes talking about, right? I'm probably going to skip it, and that's completely on me, not them, because that's just the way. You know, we have to. We're probably going to get a lot of questions, and we have to be get the ones that people actually want to hear about. Right. I mean, right look, right. you're 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 you maybe you stepped on a cow patty in Middleburg, and you're upset about it. But that might actually that could be funny. But the point is. <laughs> There might be something that we just can't uh, talk about. Sure. And sometimes we can't – many times we cannot talk about ongoing investigations. Yes, And yes. that – people don't understand that. And I think what I'll do is bring in one of our detective supervisors in one day to talk about why we why we don't want to and cannot do that. Um, and it's not that we're hiding anything, but um, there's legal reasons and investigative reasons yeah, why we absolutely. don't. So, but that's a, just another example. A lot of people ask questions about what, what's the what's the status of this case and, and – yeah, just yeah. Can't, you just can't, can't talk, talk about, about it. it. Yeah, yeah. Nope. it makes sense. And you, of course, can listen to the podcast. There'll be a f- 
hundred different ways to listen to this. So tell your friends, including, uh, I believe it's going to po- be posted on, on our YouTube channel. We'll post it on our YouTube channel. Uh, so you have that option also. Oh, we have yeah, a click, honey. Yeah. Share off YouTube yes, channel. Yes, we do. I, yep. I encourage you though, to listen to it, like on Apple music or Amazon or Spotify. So we, so the, the numbers can get up, but, but you know, uh, <laughs> that, that works for me too. Uh, Never before, uh, duty. <laughs> but listen to it. That's what's important. Listen to it, share it. Um, anyway, what's, what's really important is, is the, the communication. So I, while I love getting numbers from my perspective of a host, I do appreciate that there's a way for somebody to listen to it and it will and it'll be there for you. So thank you so much, uh, Deputy Ford and Sheriff Cook. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, we'll tune in next week. And by the way, it was a pleasure to meet you. It was Sheriff a pleasure Cook. to meet you too. All right. Would this be the 51st time? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, you're listening to Never Update.